Good news, everyone. Another stupid conservative tabloid newspaper has misrepresented scientific research, which led me down a rabbit hole of learning yet again, uh, from which I've only just emerged blinking in the bright light of day. This time, it's the New York Post reporting that left-wing extremism linked to psychopathy and narcissism study. Alongside photos of people at Portland's 2020 protests in response to the killing of George Floyd, the article states, left-wing extremism can be rooted in very unhealthy and selfish mental behavior, a new study suggests. Fascinating. It's enough to make one wonder what the actual study has to say. It turns out it's not actually about left-wing extremism, which in the United States could be anything from firebombing a Walgreens to knocking on doors asking people to vote for Bernie Sanders. It's actually about a particular well-defined type of extremism known as authoritarianism, which the study authors define as a submissiveness to authority figures and a dominance towards subordinates. This is the point where I felt myself tumbling down that rabbit hole because the entire idea of left-wing authoritarianism seems to be a paradox. The right wing is by definition authoritarian. A central tenet of conservative thought is a belief in an inevitable hierarchy that leads to the natural superiority of those who are in positions of authority. And even in this study, which by the way is open access, and as always, you can find the link in my Patreon linked below, the authors define left-wing authoritarianism in part as anti-hierarchical aggression, authoritarian anti-authoritarianism. Now I absolutely had to find out more about that. It turns out that I'm not the only one who is baffled that such a thing could even exist. For years now, sociologists have debated whether left-wing authoritarianism is even a thing, to the point where one study I found stated that it's famously known as the Loch Ness Monster of Political Psychology. A quote I later sourced back to Canadian psychologist Bob Altemeyer, who developed the first right-wing authoritarian scale, and then later on the left-wing authoritarian scale, indicating either he changed his mind or else he thinks that the Loch Ness Monster is kind of real. In his book, The Authoritarians, Altemeyer wrote, an authoritarian follower submits excessively to some authorities, aggresses in their name, and insists on everyone following their rules. If these authorities are the established authorities in society, that's right-wing authoritarianism. If one submits to authorities who want to overthrow the establishment, that's left-wing authoritarianism as I define things. Interesting. But apparently, Altemeyer's left-wing idea of authoritarianism that scale failed to actually find very many authoritarians, at least compared to the hordes that he found using the right-wing scale. Other psychologists then thought that maybe that meant a better scale would identify more left-wing authoritarians. So that is just what Thomas H. Costello at Emory University did in a paper last year, which is the one I found that referenced the Loch Ness Monster. He and his colleagues developed a list of 39 questions to determine whether or not a person adheres to three traits, anti-hierarchical aggression, like if I could remake society, the most privileged people would be at the bottom, top-down censorship like getting rid of inequality is more important than protecting the so-called right to free speech, and anti-conventionalism. I cannot imagine myself becoming friends with a political conservative. That new scale did identify people they consider to be left-wing authoritarians. But hold on, you might say, who gets to say that those things are authoritarian? Didn't they just draw a circle around a random group of people and then apply the label authoritarian to them? And yeah, you know, that kind of did happen, in my opinion. I can't really imagine myself becoming friends with a political conservative in this, the year of our Lord 2023, when political conservatives don't view me as a complete human with bodily autonomy. Does that make me, in part, an authoritarian? But strengthening Costello's point is that this group that he labeled did possess a shared constellation of personality traits, cognitive features, beliefs, and motivational values with the people who are identified as right-wing authoritarians. He also found that this label powerfully predicts behavioral aggression and is strongly correlated with participation in political violence. Which, okay, that's 
pretty convincing, to be honest. And so this new study that inspired that New York Post article builds upon that research. It was pre-registered, which, you know, is my favorite because it means that they couldn't just keep trying new statistical analyses until they got an interesting result. And they found that anti-hierarchical aggression, that part of left-wing authoritarianism, is associated with both antagonistic narcissism and psychopathy. And that some leftist political activists do not actually strive for social justice and equality, but rather use political activism to endorse or exercise violence against others to satisfy their own ego-focused needs. And honestly, yeah, okay, that makes sense, um, considering people like Sean King exist, who has been... He's become such a joke in left-wing circles that I couldn't even remember his real name at first, and I had to do some creative Googling. King is a grifter of the highest order. You know, he's got a very long history of separating left-wing fools from their money, like a crowdfunded plan to hike seven mountains that he quit after a few days of training, a crowdfunded website, the North Star, that failed to deliver on its promises, $60,000 raised for the family of Tamir Rice that had to be seized by court order after King failed to give it to them, $40,000 of donor money spent on a dog, yes, a dog that he then returned for being too aggressive. Like, I honestly, I don't have enough time to go into all of the ways that this guy has been an absolute monster to people who continue to donate to him. He's like a less trustworthy monorail guy from The Simpsons, but instead of the monorail, it's civil rights. And in addition to the mismanagement of potentially millions of dollars, King has also done things like that time he published a mugshot of a white guy calling him a racist, violent asshole and accusing him of murdering a black child in a drive-by shooting. The man was not connected with the crime in any way, but he reported that he and his family received numerous death threats. Six months later, that man committed suicide. So... Yeah, you know, there are definitely people in left-wing circles who do not actually strive for social justice and equality, but rather use political activism to endorse or exercise violence against others to satisfy their own ego-focused needs. But here's my final concern. Can we actually call those people left-wing? To get back to actual definitions, left-wing at its core is about advocating for equality. If someone doesn't actually believe in that, are they actually left-wing? But now I'm getting awful close to the no true Scotsman fallacy. Sean King isn't truly left wing because he's bad and left wing people are good. And how do I know? Maybe King really does believe in progressive ideology. It's just that his dang old narcissism and psychopathy keeps getting in the way of him doing the right thing. So that's where I've ended up after emerging from this rabbit hole. I'm still not sure that there's truly anything that we could call left-wing authoritarianism as the actual definition of left-wing does preclude it. But also people are complicated and they can hold two opposing beliefs at once. And there are always going to be terrible people in every community who use others for their own nefarious purposes. But one thing I am sure about, which is that the New York Post is still a pile of garbage, not fit to wrap a fish in. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks.